Over the last two or three years, I've been trying to rebuild myself back up technologically, starting from the Stone Age and working to the modern day. It's an incredibly fun and interesting thing to work on, as well as being endlessly annoying. But something I've noticed is that whenever I bring this project up, a lot of people compare me to this one anime and manga series called Dr. Stone, which I actually did check out a few months or so after getting a few messages about it, and it is pretty good. The plot is essentially that every human on Earth gets turned to stone, and nearly 4,000 years later, a super genius named Senku gets unpetrified. From there, he has to figure out a way to unpetrify everyone and rebuild humanity back to modern technology. It's a great series, one that I seriously recommend if you're interested in the subject of this channel, so I decided to test out a few things they bring up throughout the show in my own project. And in this video, we're going to be tackling something discussed in episode 2, described as the most important part of rebuilding a technological civilization, calcium carbonate. In the series, Senku gives four different uses for it. Agriculture, construction, soap making, and gunpowder. So to start off, I needed a source of calcium carbonate. Now, in the show, they use seashells, and you can also get it from limestone, but the source I went with is probably the easiest way to get it, regular old eggshells. They're mostly calcium carbonate, besides some weird protein and sulfur impurities. So I started by just taking some eggshells and grinding them up in a mortar and pestle. In the show, Senku describes them as being a helpful fertilizer for agriculture, and that's mostly because calcium carbonate is a base, which is essentially the opposite of an acid, which means that if a base comes in contact with an acid, they'll kind of cancel each other out and neutralize and become better for plants to grow in. So, I'm going to do a quick demonstration of that by pouring some of my pulverized calcium carbonate into vinegar. Of course, the calcium carbonate's basic, and the vinegar is acidic. As you can see, a couple things happen when the two come in contact with each other. First of all, the solution is neutralized. It goes from a pH of 2 or 3 to about a 5 or a 6, which is about 10 times more acidic than water. Second of all, it releases some gas, which you can see bubbling up in the beaker, which is carbon dioxide. And third of all, it forms a solid precipitate, which is calcium acetate. In comparison to even other weak acids like baking soda, calcium carbonate's pretty weak, but obviously they don't have much better for neutralizing soil at this point. So while it's not the best fertilizer, it would absolutely work in a pinch. So, we have use number one. Now let's go on to a slightly more exciting use. Cement! That's concrete, baby! In Dr. Stone, all the Senku says for making cement is just heat up lime and mix it with sand and you got yourself cement. That's technically right. He's describing a process of making a lime mortar by heating calcium carbonate to make calcium oxide, mixing it with sand and water, and then once it dries out, it'll turn back into calcium carbonate, which is limestone. So that's what we're going to be doing. Holy crap, Lois. Man-made horrors beyond my comprehension. Pretty much we're just burning off all the excess CO2 in the calcium carbonate to make calcium oxide. I'm hoping this will also help purify our final result because the impurities I mentioned, the sulfur and proteins, the proteins are like burning off by now. And so is the sulfur. There's some gas coming off that. I don't know if you can see that. I shouldn't get so close. That I think is mostly sulfur dioxide, which some of it might condense back into it. But, you know, our main impurities now are carbon and sulfur and neither are soluble in water and we're going to strain everything, so we should be good, hopefully. From there, the next step was to mix that new calcium oxide powder with some clay or sand or dirt or really anything just to bind it together, and after a couple of days it should set into hardened cement. So that's exactly what I did. And here is our final result. Uh, just kidding, this actually isn't the one we made before. The one I made in the footage, uh, I let it set outside for some reason, and it rained, like, right after. So that's kind of slop right now, because it didn't set all the way. But this is a previous sample of lime mortar I made using the same technique and same ratios of calcium oxide to sand. And it, it doesn't look like the color of the clay at all, which means that the calcium oxide actually did combine with it, and it's a... Uh, it's not super dense, but it's, but it's completely insoluble in water, so hopefully we made lime mortar. Woo! All right, so out of the four different uses of Senku lists, we're only going to be doing the first two. However, I do want to prepare for use number three, which is soap making, which is going to be the next major video on this channel. So we're going to make the precursor to soap, sodium hydroxide. 
I did this during a little impromptu chemistry cooking session right before school at 6 a.m. So that's why uh, that's why the footage looks worse than usual. So what I used in this reaction was a mix of calcium oxide and sodium carbonate, which I try to get everything I use in this series myself, but there's no sources of sodium carbonate even in this state, I don't think. So I just went with some store-bought stuff. I put the sodium carbonate in a solution of water and then mixed in some calcium oxide. The calcium oxide reacted with the water to form calcium hydroxide, put off a little heat, and that allowed for the sodium carbonate and calcium hydroxide to combine as sodium hydroxide and that then dissolved in the water. From there, the entire mixture was strained. All of these solid chunks are weird calcium oxide that we don't want. And everything that did dissolve and did get strained through is our final result of sodium hydroxide. Which is pretty, pretty caustic. It's around a 14 at its most concentrated, although mine is only a 12 or 11. And here is our final result, our little batch of sodium hydroxide. Let's go. Uh, also, I made its sister chemical, potassium hydroxide, using some of our sodium hydroxide and potassium carbonate. So yeah, we have two really bad chemicals now. So, as I said at the start of the video, Senku lists four major uses, but we've only talked about two of them. The next two, soap making and gunpowder, will each be their own respective videos, which should come out in the next couple of weeks, hopefully. So yeah. Until then, you better watch out for more awesome caveman chemistry cooking videos. And don't forget to get excited. This is exhilarating.